Right, May 2006, question 11, here we go. The line L1 passes through these two points here, so we're going to find an equation of L1. Now, using the Arnell's method, we're going to find the gradient first. Gradient equals difference in y, that's 2, well, I'll do it this way around, 8 subtract 2, divided by difference in x. Make sure you do it the right way around, it's the q subtract p, so 11 subtract minus 1. So the gradient is a half. So the equation of the line is y equals a half x plus c. Uh, I just need to find what c is now. And to do that we put in one of these coordinates. I'll use this one because it seems to have the smallest numbers. We get y equals half x is minus a half plus c. So c must be two and a half. Alright, so to c is two and a half, so the equation becomes y equals half x plus two and a half. Now the line L2 passes through these that point and is perpendicular to L1. L1 has a gradient of a half. Now from the bit above, uh, the bit of that two lines being perpendicular, that tells us that if L1 has a gradient of a half, L2 will have a gradient of minus 2. So it's minus 1 over. Minus 1 over a half is minus 2. So the equation of L2 is y equals 2, sorry, minus 2 x plus c. Now to find c, 0, put the numbers in 0, equals minus 2 times 10, which is minus 20 plus c, so I need to add 20. Okay. Now the next thing is the lines L1 and L2 intersect at the point S, so this line here intersects this line here at this point S. Sorry about the handwriting, the mouse is a bit awkward. So I need to solve these simultaneous equations, so this equals this. Whipping it all over to one side, we get, uh, take the 2x to join the half x. You write it out, write out half x plus 5 over 2 equals minus 2x plus 20. Then the next line after that is getting the x's onto one side, which is 2.5x, that's the half x plus the 2x. Uh, and that equals 20 take away 2.5, which is 17.5. And, and so x equals 7 is the solution to this. If x equals 7, y equals 3.5 plus 2.5 is 6. Just check that that works by using the other one. So the coordinates are 7, 6. If, if x equals 7, this is minus 14 plus 20, which is 6. So the coordinates of s are 7, 6. Next, show that the length of r, s is 3 root 5. There's r, there's s. So the length is Pythagoras there, and I'll just draw where this where this comes from. 10 comma 0 is here, is r, 7 comma 6 is here, so we need to use Pythagoras theorem on this triangle here to find this length I'm drawing now, that's the distance. This length here is 10 minus 7, and this length here is from 0 to 6. So Pythagoras theorem tells us that 3 squared plus 6 squared equals this squared, so this 3 squared is 9, 6 squared is 35, 36, sorry, so that gives us 45, so this is the square root of 45. Now square root of 45 equals the square root of 9 times the square root of 5, which is 3 root 5, and that's what they tell us the answer is, so it's all looking good there, 3 root 5. And finally, hence or otherwise, find the exact area of PQR. I'll just change colour a little bit here. Let's have a bit of uh, black. Let's see why not. We've got P. Where do we get? P is minus 1, comma 2. P is here. Q is... Where did Q go? Q is 11, comma 8. Q is 11... 8 there 
Notice I'm drawing this, and I've seen lots of people who don't bother drawing these sort of things, who wonder why they can't do them. Well, I can't visualise what's going on here that well. So Q is 11, 8, as we're told in the question. P is minus 1, 2. And we're looking for the exact area of PQR. R is 10, 0 here. So we're finding the area of that triangle there. All right, now, uh, this they're guiding us through here. Uh, P to Q, I mean, they wouldn't just ask us this, this hence, or, hence or otherwise bit if they hadn't been guiding us through. So let's just have a quick look at what they're on about here. Um, L1 joins P to Q, draw it. L1 joins P to Q there. And L2 goes through R, which is this point here and is perpendicular and they intersect at the point S which is 7 comma 6 so go through 10 comma 0 and is perpendicular there and it goes through that point there now we just found the distance from R to S is 3 root 5 that's this distance here and we're finding the area of a triangle going from P to Q to R, uh, which is this triangle here. Now you should be able to see what they're getting at here. I'll draw that again, that was only a really appalling effort. Uh, P to Q, and that's not much better, but it's a little bit better. P to Q to R. Now, area triangle is half base times height. We just found the height here. If you, turn, if you draw this on the page and turn round, turn it round, this is now the height and this length is the base, so we need to find the length from P to Q. The length from P to Q here, length from P to Q is drawing out where the coordinates are, it's 12 from P to Q in the X direction, and 6 from P to Q in the Y direction, so we're after the distance from P to Q there, 12 across and 6 up, 144 is 12 squared, I'm doing Pythagoras theorem. 144 plus 36 is 180, this is root 180. Alright, so this length here is root 180. Now root 180 is, uh, excuse me, my hand really hurts here, uh, it is 36 times 5, so that's 6 root 5. Okay, now half base times height, half 6 root 5 times 3 root 5, the height, half, 6 root 5, yikes, times 3 root 5, I won't bother writing this, half of 6 root 5 times 3 root 5 is half of 18 times root 5 squared, which is 9 times 5, which is 45. I might be able to just about write this here, half of 6 root 5 times 3 root 5, the, the 6 times 3 is 18 times a half is 9, and the root 5 times root 5 is 5, so 9 times 5, 45 is the final score.